Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all to London College of Fashion, part of the University of the Arts London, Europe's leading educator in the arts. I'm Francis Corner, and I'm head of college, and I'm absolutely delighted to say that tonight's uh, marks our fourth annual caring talk and the third of the awards, which punctuate our transformative partnership with Caring, bringing together business and education to put design for sustainability at the forefront of everything that we do. I'm delighted to welcome back the Caring team and our very special guests for this evening's talk, Marco Bizzari, President and Chief Executive Officer of the and Livia Firth, Founder and Creative Director of EcoAge, the Green Carpet Challenge and recent awards. It is a great privilege to have you here this evening for what I know from discussions backstage will give us all a very exclusive insight into how you are shaping the future direction of Gucci in terms of sustainability. Over the past four years, our partnership with Kering has continued to strengthen and create unrivaled opportunities for our students to exchange expertise with world leaders in research and luxury fashion, as well as developing opportunities for internships and employment. This transformative approach has been made possible through the joint development of our master's curriculum with Kering and underlined by the annual Kering Award for Sustainable Fashion, the winners of which will be announced later tonight. At London College of Fashion, UAL, we have developed a wide agenda, which includes social responsibility, environmental sustainability, awareness raising and collaboration to encourage dialogue between staff, students and our wider community to develop an understanding of how we can use fashion to create better lives for all. The Caring Partnership has been really significant in helping to support these values and to embed sustainability into every aspect of our teaching. The fashion industry can be an uncompromising place for new businesses and young designers. As production cycles get faster and with the world's resources rapidly depleting, emerging businesses need to become more sustainable, agile and innovative. Through this partnership, we are training designers, communicators and strategists to be responsive to change and have awareness of sustainability in everything that they do. In five years, the London College of Fashion will be moving to its new site in Stratford. For the first time in its 116-year history, we will bring together our varied disciplines and facilities into a new single site which will provide us with unrivaled opportunities to create world-leading campus and where the future of fashion will be explored in many ways that we are yet to imagine. Collaborative projects such as this one with Kering will ensure the next generation are prepared for an industry which faces significant social and environmental challenges. I want to give my sincere thanks to Kering for their ongoing support and shared vision for this unique partnership, and to Professor Dillis Williams, who you will be hearing from later this evening, Director of the Centre for Sustainable Fashion here at LCF, who has been instrumental in placing sustainability at the heart of what we do. I now have the greatest of pleasure of introducing Marie-Claire Davaux, Chief Sustainability Officer and Head of International Institutional Affairs of Caring, to the stage. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Francis. I'm very pleased to be with you tonight for our annual Caring Talk. And as you said, it's a number four. Our partnership with the London College of Fashion is an integral part of our worldview at Caring. Educating the next generation to think and act sustainability is not only something we see as a moral duty, but one that will benefit all of us. And why? Because we look to you entering luxury and the industry in general to have the skills to merge fashion and sustainability. 
You will guide our industry and help make positive changes in the most sustainable way. Over the years, we have shared knowledge with the London College of Fashion and learned a lot. In particular, I'm very proud of the curriculum we developed together for the master program. It's a benchmark for education and sustainability and links to what we need to do in the day-to-day -day business of being sustainable at caring. So everything you are learning as a student is directly transferable to the next stage of your professional life. In essence, we are shaping the future of fashion together. Part of what we are doing at Kering is preparing the future groundwork. At the beginning of the year, Kering CEO and Chairman François-Henri Pinault announced our new strategy, 2025 Sustainability Strategy. It's a luxury rethink set in beauty, creativity, quality, and sustainability. For us, this is one and the same. We are going beyond the environmental side and advocating social welfare inside and outside the group. We are also creating new innovative business models. This kind of sustainable innovation can't come without education. So, to the students present tonight, we need you to revision and relearn how we produce our products from the sourcing of our raw materials to our clients. And for you, to become the next generation that creates and innovates sustainability. You will be, in a nutshell, the leaders of tomorrow. Today, we are starting to see more and more leaders step up and show their commitment. This is why I'm very pleased that Marco Bizzari is with us to discuss Gucci's sustainability efforts with Livia First. Gucci is a leader in fashion and sustainability, setting the trends season after season. And I would like to underline that Marco Bizzari is personally deeply involved and committed to pushing the sustainability agenda. And it's a really, on a daily basis, a great support for the sustainability team at the level of the corporate. So please welcome Marco Bizzari and Livia first on stage. I was thinking about where is the microphone, I think so. yes. Um, well, it's, it's really nice to be here tonight, uh, particularly in, in conversation with Marco, um, who um, I don't want to make blush immediately, but you know, this summer I read that Gucci was proclaimed the hottest thing on the planet. So what I want to know is what does it feel like to receive this kind of praise, but mostly what is the magic ingredient um, it's, not, I mean, it's, not, uh, it's not about being the artist or not the artist in fashion. You have moments of uh, where you are there and then you go down and then you, you need to count on um, and living the day uh, after day. Uh, to me, the most important thing about the fact of being now and leading the trend in fashion is, is not about revenues or data that as a consequence of, of choices. It's very much about what's happening in terms of culture in Gucci. Um, I, I gave an interview uh, two weeks ago to an Italian, Beppe Severnini, that you know, and, uh, and um, he was visiting the headquarters in Milan, and he was telling me that the thing that he really um, hit him was the fact that in, in, in our headquarters in Milan that we opened 12 months ago, all, this, all the people are smiling. And to me, it's the most interesting uh, praising of what we do. We believe that we work in an industry of creativity, and creativity can foster only if there's a ground for it, and supported and protected. <coughs> and, and the possibility of any emotion passes through that. In terms of ingredient, um, I would like to have a magic formula, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it's, it's a, a, any, any moment uh, as a specific uh, characteristic. So you cannot re replicate what you did in a, in a previous company when you move in another company. 
you need to just uh, make sure that uh, you have the right strategy, because of course if the strategy is not good, even if you execute properly, yeah. it's gonna be a disaster, even worse. Um, but um, but this, the, 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 the fact that uh, at the center, the way in which you, you, you fine tune the strategy is, is, is together with the people that you have. It's, it, the same strategy can be applied and executed in a completely different way according to the team that you have. Luckily, in Gucci, I found a, an incredible team, and that made the difference. That really made the difference. So if you're able to maintain this kind of culture where we allow people to, to take risks, to make mistakes, maybe not making the same mistake twice, <laughs> not, uh, that would be useful. But, but overall, is, is, um, that makes the difference. And then I'm looking here at my team present. Um, in Gucci, I mean, Marie, Marie Claire was, was, was telling that I'm supporting and the, the sustainability and the rest, but we can support everything, but if the team on a daily basis, they don't work. If we, for example, Rossella Raval is working for us from, from a long time. She's the one really leading uh, the sustainability in, in, in Gucci, and without her, the result would not be possible in the, in, the, in the past. So, again, it's all about people. And, and, and more and more going forward with the technology changes, people will remain the center of what we do. But it, it's interesting because the approach is quite disruptive in a way. It's like it's the same thing sometimes that they said about me. And you are, you are the same. You are a real disruptor in, in the way that you approach the old-fashioned <laughs> system of CSR. And, and put something, a spin on it. So h how did you do that? What is your take on, on that old-fashioned system, and how did you turn it on its head, almost? No, the, the, I think that the word disruptive, uh, disruptor has been a little bit abused recently. Everybody's a disruptor. Uh, I think everybody's a disruptor, nobody's a disruptor at the end. I think that the, 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 um, the contrary is, is the status quo. Today, the world changes so fast, so it's not even an option not to change. And, uh, and that is together with the fact that we, st we tend to be bored quite easily in Gucci. So after bored. A bored. So we, we like uh -huh. to change quite frequently. And uh, my, the, my team is laughing because we, we launched so many projects. That <laughs> uh, but it's, it's the way in which we can really make sure that the company remains flexible. Um, we are working in an industry where uh, the added value is very, very high. So the potential of making uh, uh, amazing growth, like we are having today in Gucci, um, is there. Just a matter of how you approach the business, how you approach the people, and etc. Um, but um, you need to make sure that, um, that um, in the case in which some external shock arrive, your company is flexible enough to react quick. But Gucci is a big machine. It's uh, 11,000 people direct and 45,000 indirect. So to move this uh, mini machine. minister is not easy. So we need to make sure that we disrupt in the sense that we interact with people in a different way. We take decisions quick, despite the fact that we are a big company. So the, the mentality that we try to, to foster in the company is very much about the, the one of the startup. So thinking about many, many small companies in Gucci instead of a big company. Yeah. But, but going back to the old um, kind of framework of CSR, what I like about your approach a lot is that, you know, one of the things that drives me crazy is when the word sustainability is only associated to environmental and, and is always leaving the people behind. And in fact, you know, in my life, I spend most of my time telling the narrative of the people in the supply chain. And you have put very much people at the front stage of Gucci so what is your take on sustainability in, in that sense? Sustainability, listen, being a CEO of a big corporation, especially in fashion, I mean, we talk about sustainability, I can, most of the cases I'm attacked, because we are exposed to everything. We, yeah. we are not perfect, so we are doing our best to improve what we are doing, and that is the first thing. To me, sustainable is to, to make a company, to, to, to make a company in Gucci, a Gucci, sustainable for Francois Ripino, investor, and employees for the next 20 years. That to me is sustainability, meaning that creating the possibility for everybody to, to live well, to have the proper salary, and to, to, to help the families that, that are related to. When I joined Gucci to, back in January 15, I met the director of um, operations, the directors of operations, because there were three at that time, and we were talking of closing 40% of our sub-suppliers, meaning wow. 16,000 people, meaning 16,000 families. Wow. So meaning 
the fact that today we are not able to find uh, supply because we, we were growing so fast, it's almost impossible to find the right supplies and we are looking everywhere to, to, to make sure that we are able to support the production, means that for me, that is the best success in terms of sustainability because we, we are able to keep this community and the territory, the investing in people alive. So that to me is sustainable. Then, the social part is, is absolutely key. And the way and the well-being of the employees, the well-being of the people in the company is key, not just because we are just ethical. We are. But especially in our industry, if we are not able to maintain that, the creativity that is at the center of our industry we cannot foster. So we need to make, to make it also for a business uh, perspective, not yeah. just because we like it. Yeah. And also, I guess you have to, to keep the business, as you say, agile and supportive. And that, because sometimes, you know, I'm sure that some of the stories in the supply chain are not always easy, right? So how do you approach that from, from within Gucci? In, in the sense that... Um, in the sense of, you know, you're talking about lots of families and a uh, big business. So the, it must take a lot of concentrated effort inside the company to keep track of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> what we are trying to do now is try to internalize uh, um, more and more the production. This is definitely a core value for, for Gucci. Uh, we are moving from an uh, internal production that is around 5-10% uh, today uh, to something that's going to be around 50-70%. The more we control it directly, the more it's easy for us to maintain these values. Because all the, our suppliers, they sign a contract with all the reference of uh, the caring uh, practice. Uh, but of course, it's not easy to, on a daily basis to control that. No. We have many teams that they go there and external audit, uh, controlling the supply chain to avoid uh, ch child labor, to avoid black labor, to avoid any kind of uh, social uh, no, misalignment. But I, I cannot be sure 100% that is happening everywhere uh, today. Yeah. We are trying to do it, but uh, of course we, you need to rely as well and you need to trust the supplier that they work with you. Of course, there's no compromise. As soon as someone makes a mistake, they're out. So they, know to, they need to know that if, if they go against these practices, they are out from Gucci. But it's not easy. It's not easy and, and, and it's, also, it's, it's also too easy to attack these companies because in reality we're trying really very, very hard. It's yeah. a lot of, it, the cost is very, very high as well. Because, of course, it's, of course. It's a, the competition plays a different, sometimes different rules. Yeah. And another attack, I'm sure, is, is, is one that I'm very familiar with. is about luxury segment. Not that the, the luxury segment is too rarefied, it's too exclusive to spare head change. But, in fact, some of the most interesting disruption, if you, even if you don't like that word, today are happening inside the luxury um, sector because... You know, it's much more in touch with the, the supply chain. is more controllable. As you say, if someone makes a mistake, you, you immediately can react. You work in partnership with your suppliers, which not every fashion industry does. And, and more often, the, the luxury sector is almost like act as a think tank for the rest of the industry. Um, and what is interesting about Gucci and about caring, too, is that you are able to to put more resources in terms of money and time into R&D and, and, and new te technologies, etc. cetera. So what, what is that? I know you have a very much a dedicated pillar to that. Yes, I mean, the, you know, uh, up, uh, until uh, some years ago, uh, the industry of fashion was um, known for having uh, very low technological barriers. It's, in fact, I mean, all the leaders, they were, they were leaders because they, all, they were only the shops in the best streets of the world, etc. And highly best talents. Today, the world is changing quite dramatically. New technologies are, are really bringing uh, uh, unlimited possibilities in terms of uh, textiles, in terms of uh, anything that you may think of. And it would be completely a mistake for us not to be at the edge of this kind of innovation. So we need to make sure that the startups that are working on this uh, possibility that it could be both um, cashmere regenerated or could be the leather in vitro, anything that is, is, they're trying to, to, to push uh, in the future, that they're going to really disrupt the industry and all the supply chain. Gucci, as like the major corporation, yeah. they need to be at, 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 at the front. And we, and we need to invest in these startups because it's, uh, the impact that they can have in, in, in sustainability in terms of environment is going to be huge. If you think about the fact that the, most probably in the future we will not need to use tanneries anymore. Oh, no. So no water, the, the damages, no chemicals, nothing. Because you, you create a, a, the, the level of the quality of the leather at the same, at the same of today without 
all the, this all part of the supply chain. Yeah. So we need to invest in that. We need to wait. In order, we need to speed up it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, I look forward to see what you come up with in that, in that field. Um, and talking about partnership also, you know, partnership with your supply chain, but at the same time also partnership with your employees, not internally. You talked to, at the beginning about the relationship that you have internally with, with, with everyone. And also, as a, I know that you're always busy internally with your team and, and also investing a lot of time in the, in, in, in the youth, you know, a lot of energy. Do you want to tell so, us a bit about that? Yeah, about the, 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 today, the, as we were saying before, the world is changing very fast. And most probably, uh, younger people, younger kids are more intelligent and more competent than us. And one of the, the points that we need to, to, to keep in mind is... I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> I'm very young. <laughs> in fact, the nurse in the sense, yeah. except for Robert <laughs> that is in front of me. Um, but it's, um, sometimes in terms of leadership, we need to unlearn instead of teaching. Because experience can be very much a prison mm. uh, and bring you to make the same kind of decision that you made in the past, and today you cannot do it anymore. So because of that, we need to be exposed as leaders uh, to this young generation that not necessarily are working with you and most probably the most intelligent ones are not working with you as well. Yeah. So you need to find them as well through the net and through uh, different uh, opportunities. So, uh, um, because you, we discussed that before, I started to, to do lunches with my old yeah. people below 30 in the company and asking them what is not working in Gucci. Three things each. So we have uh, 15 people at the time, so I met like more than 150 people everywhere in the world. And, um, and then if the projects they were proposing... What is the thing that was not working in Gucci? No, I'm uh. joking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, it's been, it's been very interesting because first, I mean, this, 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 um, these uh, kids are exposed to myself, so in the sense that they, they have the possibility to show, and they saw very intelligent uh, talent that maybe in a big organization they cannot be uh, coming yeah. uh, in front of, of a CEO. And then if the project makes sense, then they were in charge of bringing it at the, at the end. So it was a very good uh, way of creating, I mean, seeing the, the company from, from, from the bottom to the top. And, uh, and together with that, we put together a, a, um, we have an executive committee of the people uh, in the senior, the senior managers of, of Gucci. <laughs> and we created as well a, called the shadow, executive, the shadow. shadow executive committee made by people below 30, discussing the same topics that we were discussing in the, in the comics, to see if the answers, the solution, the proposal were different. And it's very interesting because there are always different angles. And, uh, and uh, we need to, to make sure that the, these talents, these kids, they, they remain with us. And they, are, uh, they are praised and they have the possibility to grow and to have the possibility to, to be mobile as well yeah. around the world. Which is very much at the core of what sustainability should also be, right? I remember. Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever, once said that sustainability should be primarily about people because if you take care of the people in your business, you automatically take care of the environment because you, you have, you know, it all goes in circle that way rather than the opposite exactly. way. Exactly. Then, yeah. of course, I think caring, especially through the, the, uh, the strength of François Ripineau, pushed really much the boundaries yeah. in fashion from the very beginning, um, setting many, many activities that were unearthed if you think about yeah. the environmental profit and loss, it's something that is yeah. being built uh, by caring. But that was groundbreaking. Because, groundbreaking yeah. because you can really follow. Uh, it's far from being perfect, but at least you have something to measure. Yeah. And, uh, and all this target that's been set for to 2025, despite the fact that there's a, a huge uh, attention in, in terms of people, and that starts very much from François Ripineau, yeah. that is a, probably the most ethical person I've ever met in my entire life. Really, so you can really trust his words. And because of that, we are contaminated because of this leadership. And uh, ideally, everybody in the company and the group should be like this. So it's, it's key as well to set targets in terms of traceability for uh, supply chain, uh, water uh, reduction in terms of use for the letter, anything that is, it makes sense in terms of impact on the environment. But everything starts from people, again. Yeah. It's at the center for everything. And, uh, and the difference that we are making today in fashion is because we have the best talents. We have the best creative director, we have the best people in the company, and we want to attract new talents. Mm. And if that is going to be the case, then we're going to keep on winning going yeah. forward. And I know that talking about talents and, and youth and, and people, um, 
I mean, we were both really excited to be tonight in a room full of, of people who have really decided to invest time and energy into studying sustainability in fashion, and they're really committed to change the, this industry. And that you specifically um, wanted to keep a rather large announcement for this audience tonight. In fact, two announcements, but one is really uh, major, uh, to give it almost as a present to them. Yes. <laughs> so over to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we decided to... Um to, um, to um, become part of the Far Free Alliance. So, I meaning we are going to stop producing and selling furs uh, from Spring Summer 18. Sorry, this deserves a huge applause. We should do a stand innovation, but precisely because of what I said at the beginning about Gucci according to what the papers say, has been proclaimed the hottest thing in the world. Once Gucci decides to go for free, I, I know that some brands have announced it before, but it will be a real game changer for the industry. So, bravo. <laughs> and I <our> applause. <laughs> and then there is something else that is, it, 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 is, it is as big in terms of investing into people and, and precisely into women and gender equality, I, I know it's another thing that Gucci is very passionate about. Yeah. And today is the, 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 the day of the girl. The day of so. the girl, yes. We, we, we're contributing like one, in one million euro for this, um, to UNICEF in order to, to help in education and safety. But because we, what we realize, I mean, diversity uh, every, in, in any industry, but especially in fashion, it is proven that if you do uh, decision or meetings with uh, different uh, kind of personality, sex or cultural difference, etc., the results is much more rich. Yeah. So despite the fact that you like it or not, the, the, again, the impact on the business is positive. So, and it, everything passes through education at the very end, from the very beginning, because the more people are, are aware of things, the more in the future they, they can make a, a choices that yeah. are more reasonable. So we decided we continue to make this kind of contribution with UNICEF. So the collaboration with Gucci started many, many years ago, and we will continue to do so. This is wonderful. Um, I know we're not off the hook yet, because now Dillis is going to open a Q&A to the students. Um, so do you want to, do you have a, come up. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, guys. Wow, what incredible insights and commitments. I know there's a lot of uh, questions that have been coming in, both on social media and I'm sure everybody in the room. Particularly after what you've just been saying, it's going to have a lot yeah. of questions for you. Seeing as I've got the stage for a second, I'm going to ask the first one. It's come in from it's the first question that came in from a student, um, and then I'll open the floor. We'll be able to take some questions. We probably won't be able to take all of them, but if I can start, Marco, by asking you, the question that's come in asks, how will Gucci use its position of influence to become a leader of sustainability in the future? So you've made these commitments now. What? How will you? create this leadership for the future? Listen, first of all, I think everybody needs to take his own decision. I mean, I don't want to be the, the vate of anybody. The point is, uh, um, I think the corporation, big corporation, have a big responsibility, even more going forward, um, because, I mean, they, they really are the only global force um, in the world. So uh, I think in setting these um, objectives of 2025 uh, in Gucci that are quite... Uh, credible and, and very ambitious, I must say. I think we set the tone in the sense that everybody will do what they want to do. I mean, we are in a, in a very democratic uh, <laughs> area. But on the other side, I think it's, it's important for, uh, for us to set it. So going forward, it's just a matter of pushing more these boundaries and making sure that we move the, the, the people that are, that are working in Gucci. If you think that Overall, we have 60,000 people. And 60,000 people have 60,000 contacts, or more than that. So the possibility to, uh, to, uh, to, to grassrooting is very, very high. So if we're able to create it, we are working on it already, in order to make sure that everybody takes action, then the possibility to influence, uh, to impact um, the world is, is, becoming, is becoming even more key. And the fact that, of course, is Gucci is so visible, so, so well-known, helps a lot. 
because it's, it's easy to speak about a fashion brand that is something else. So we need to use that in a positive way. Absolutely. I mean, it's incredible for somebody that's as visible as you are to be making such commitments because that has a ripple effect across society and the industry. I could continue the conversation, but I shouldn't do because I'm sure there's a lot of uh, questions from the audience. Can I have a show of hands and see if I can take a couple of questions um, and then we'll come back and take a couple more? Any questions? Everybody's being shy now. There is always the, 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 the first one, first. you know, like the, the scary first hand. Come on, otherwise I can... Yes, okay, I yeah. see... Yes. Somebody, somebody got a mic. Great. Up at the back. At the back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask, is there anything Gucci is doing regarding overconsumption? Because that's a big problem in fashion industry and it's something which is kind of, well, it's positive for you because you're selling stuff, but it's a big problem and I'm wondering if there is anything you plan to do about that in the future? In, in terms of, listen, for, for us, it's a good problem to have, as you say, but if the, giving a more sustainable approach on that, we are working a lot in terms of, uh, we are thinking about many different business models possible going forward. That could be the renting, that is something that we, we are trying to, 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 to um, think about it. Uh, and again, in maintaining the luxury positioning, because we don't want to become a fast fashion or become to, to, to the, value, the, the, the value of the brand, keeping in mind that, again, overconsumption is a problem. On the other side, we have 60,000 people to feed. So we need to make sure that the two things go together. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's like uh, you, you, should you, should, you could ask me, you should stop using leather. Okay, then uh, I need to fire 11,000 people. So where, 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 where the sustainability is fine too. So the way in which we do it is try to work on that in the sense that to reduce it with, with these objectives, to reduce the impact of what we do on, on the environment and on the people in the communities. In terms of overconsumption, I think that um, if, you, if um, as we were saying before, technology could help a lot because the way in which um, especially uh, the, the in the future, will, certainly will come the, the leather in vitro. That is going to cut a lot of the supply chain and the impact on the environment. And that is just one example. The technology is working so, 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 so quick now in this specific context that, of course, is a problem. But on the other side, um, something that we, we, recently, um, we recently did in order to reduce the impact on the, on the leather is um, and it looks like it's stupid, but reality is something that just came out because of a, of a person working in Gucci. We are using leather, just the one that we, uh, we produce, in the sense that normally before the, the, the leather was cut as a total, so all the water uh, use, energy, etc., was on the total leather. Now we, all the scrap is taken out before, and just that reduced the impact of 20% on, uh, on the total environment. But to do so, you need to teach and to, to work very closely with the suppliers, with the tanneries, because I mean, they're, they're not used to change the way of working. So it's a, very, a, it's a mentality approach, the cultural change, that is the most difficult part. But also, I remember, sorry if I, if I step in, because um, it struck me a lot when we were in Milan during the Fashion Awards and we were talking with Alessandro and you about how Alessandro has started to really, he has changed completely his approach to, to the collections. So why before any brand would have, you know, X number of collection a year and they're all uh, homogeneous and then this, this kind of clothes or dress or trousers are not fashionable anymore because they're solar season. Alessandro has completely put that thing on his head and is, is working in such a diverse way and really supporting individuality that, in fact, he was saying, once you buy a Gucci thing, you can keep, you know, you don't need to, to buy another one for a long time. So I'm sure that SEO doesn't make you very happy, but there is a thinking from his side, you know, that by putting the, the 
on the scale, the weight on the individuality rather than homogenization, um, in a way you break that cycle of overconsumption as well, psychologically. That's very true. And also, um, one of the things that uh, we did in, uh, in the recent past, I mean, we decided to give more longevity to our product, to yeah. stop the markdown in our shops, and that, despite the, I mean, the financial implication, is very much to say these this, um, bags or these uh, items is going to it's going to last for a, for a long time, longer time. It's not just um, uh, living for that specific fashion season. And that is, is a, in terms of, I think, in terms of overconsumption, is a, is a good way to, to take in terms of fashion. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. And I'm sure we could actually continue that conversation as a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, another question. Anybody else got any questions? Yeah, here. here. Yes. One, two. Yes. Oh, ah, Mike's gone up there. Okay. I'll come down here next. <laughs> um, hi, that was a very interesting talk on how Gucci is changing sustainability in the luxury fashion industry. So the Kering Group has been awarded uh, the most sustainable luxury company for third year in a row. So on one side, we have this increasing pressure on the industry to be more sustainable in terms of reducing the impact that it has on the environment. But do you think uh, a luxury customer would actually pay more for sustainable luxury? Like, do you think in the future, luxury, sustainable luxury could be a selling point? Because luxury has always been synonymous with exclusivity, with quality, with heritage. So do you think in the future, sustainable luxury could be a high selling point? Right. Thank yeah, thank you. Um, yes, today is not there yet. Uh, but the more we go forward, the more I think that consumer will will decide. Uh, I think consumers today they are not willing to pay an extra premium uh, because you are sustainable. Uh, so by 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 consequence, the cost that you sustain in running a company sustainable are much higher. But on the other side, especially with the new generations, is not anymore an option. So even if today um, price cannot be um, applied on that, and the consumer do not necessarily choose cho cho a, a company uh, because it's sustainable. I think the more we go forward, the more it's going to happen. And, uh, and in any case, I don't think it's not a, even an option today. Um, what, what's happening outside is quite clear. So everybody needs to take uh, the steps that he can do in order to, to reduce this kind of impact and to work for that. In keeping in mind, again, as Livia was saying before, it's not just about the environment. It's also about people. Because, uh, again, it's, it's not just uh, I become clean in a second, but then the effect that you have on, on the population and the people is, is going to be dramatic. So we need to just to make sure that the two things go together. Great, thank you. And yes, you're talking about connecting culture, community, nature, and creativity. Is that sort of definition of sustainability, which obviously to us and our students is, is great to hear. Uh, we've probably got time for one or two more questions, so maybe I can take one question here and one at the back there, and we'll decide to take two questions and then we'll come back with them. Thanks. It's Lucy Shafey Terra. I just want to pick up on a couple of themes that have come already. Um, wonderful to hear that you're thinking about developing renting models and encouraging longer use of products, so making your own house more sustainable. I wanted to pick up a little bit on the role of fashion in making sustainability culturally relevant. And if we could pop for a moment to climate change um, uh, and this audience, there's a real problem with climate change at the moment. Denial is no longer an issue. There's a, th a thing called climate fatalism, where people, particularly millennials and Gen Z, feel that there's nothing that can be done, even though it's such a serious issue. I wondered about if you see a role for Gucci in making sustainability or climate change more culturally relevant and whether you might even, you know, put together some kind of climate optimism campaign or join some, uh, 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 I must uh, disclose, we're running a climate optimist campaign. <laughs> Will you join the Futera climate optimist campaign? <laughs> the role, do you see a role in um, making it more culturally relevant? You're, you are the makers of manners. Um, Great. Thank so, you, Lucy. We'll take the other yeah. one. So. so the question is about if I'm optimistic for the future, you say? <laughs> Listen, we, I think we are... Anything that you read today is all about bad news. 
In reality, I think, is today we are living in the best period of history in terms of opportunities. It's all the data, in any angle that you look at it, that positive versus the past. It's the best moment ever in history. The problem is that we like more to listen about negative than positive. It's a world of opportunities. If you think about um, what's happening today in fashion, because I know fashion better than other industry, the possibility for younger generation to become and to work in this industry, merging their capability and creativity with technology, they can create job and, and responsibilities that are at least as important like to have a degree in the best university of the world. Because Alessandro Michele, that is a genius, but could not do anything without the artisan that we have in Gucci. So they really work together. And going forward, the, the, if creativity today is important, tomorrow will be even more important. And the way in which they're going to be merged and matched with technology will create a big difference in terms of uh, competitive advantage. So I'm completely positive. Of, of course, the, there are many things that are not right, the climate change, migration, many things, disequality. I'm not saying that everything is, is, is pink. I will say so. But there are many data today that show that today, if you want to do something, you can do it. And especially with technology, the possibility that we have with technology is endless. If you think that Israel, for example, is uh, completely autonomous in terms of desalination, so they can take the water from the sea and they are 100% autonomous. If you do so for all, all the regions and all the countries in the world, you, you, you solve the problem about water. Because water is, is not a scarce resource, it's everywhere in the, in, the, in the planet. And the way in which you can teach education through technology, through drones in Africa, for example, without having any kind of connection, and giving the possibility to, to people and kids to be connected to, to the web through the drones, and having the possibility to, to, uh, to get education through iPad without a teacher, just if you think about this, it's, it's endless the possibility, the opportunity that we have today. It's just a matter of understanding where they are and how we catch them. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a need from corporations to make sure that that happens. So the reason of the contribution to UNICEF is not about making a philanthropic donation and cleaning my, you know, my ethical problems. It's very much about the fact that the more we are able to create a more uh, educated um, area in terms of women in this, in this specific case, the more the future will be brighter. So I'm very optimistic, frankly. Right. I know we're probably out of time for questions now, even though I'd like to ask a few more myself, but we'll have a chance later, I'm sure. Um, now is my opportunity to invite to the stage Beatrice Lazar. Beatrice is the Head of Human Resources for, for Caring. And at the same time, I'd like to say a huge thank you for thank your you. great insights. <laughs> It would be difficult for me to, um, to follow up on such an illuminating and uh, thought-provoking uh, talk. Thank you very much, Olivia. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. Uh, now it's time to turn uh, our attention to the Caring Awards for Sustainable Fashion. And it is an honor for me to be here today to celebrate this year's inspiring and promising winners. I'm talking about the student, and this is going to be the main focus of today, my talk. So at Caring, we support all our brands to lead with business practices that contribute to a better future. Because we believe that building sustainable luxury is the right thing to do for the world, for our business, and for our clients. We also believe that we must encourage the future leaders of the fashion industry to build sustainability into their work from the beginning of their career which is why we joined forces with the Center for Sustainable Fashion several years ago to create the Caring Sustainable Fashion Awards. So this program helps us shape the future of the fashion industry as we share our values with students and have the chance to meet extraordinary talent. Speaking personally, I love these awards as they give us the chance, a unique opportunity to have a meaningful exchange with the most talented young people, these passionate people in the room tonight, um, who can challenge us such that we can adapt and evolve our role and offer as an employer. 
in this, our third year of the Caring Sustainable Fashion Award, we, see the, we set the bar high, asking students to achieve four essential goals. And in order to be considered, the students had to develop projects which, one, were economically, environmentally, and socially viable. Two, that had a rigorously researched framework of sustainability. Third, that demonstrated innovation and original thought. And, of course, were deeply relevant to the brand and the client. Beyond our four primary objectives, our two brands had specific briefs for the students. Gucci asked students to draw from the iconic brand's 100 years of history of innovation and resourcefulness to help it become a beacon of sustainability in, in its next 100 years of existence, all whilst capturing and enhancing the spirit of possibility that the brand embodies, as we just heard from um, Marco. Stella McCartney invited students to apply their creativity to the development of concepts, products, materials, systems, and messages that express their values and approaches to sustainability. So from more than 400 applicants, four students developed visionary projects which stood out, showing a mix of insight, thoughtfulness, and understanding of sustainability challenges. And I'm going to give you some of the um, examples. One student drew inspiration from such disparate fields such as biology, sound design, and textile to create pigments and dyes that will be natural, renewable, and bio biodegradable. Um, another student who made it to the final 10 worked to address and replace non-renewable non structural materials in luggage without compromising the visual appearance and came up with the idea of using a mixture of cork and bioresin for a lightweight, durable, and environmentally sustainable alternative. Another of our finalists drew from both a scientific and artistic sides to begin research on a new innovative material. And, an, and another one, the final one, sorry, was inspired to take a radical new approach to denim, turning it from one of the worst offenders in fashion, if we may say, in terms of environmental impact, and reimagining it as a local artisan and regenerative material. What all the finalists had in common were the breadth and the depth of their commitment to bringing sustainability to fashion. They all imagine a future for our industry that draws from art, science, and technological innovation whilst helping preserve and indeed improve our environment, supply chain, and the craftsmanship the craftsmanship, sorry, that is the mark of true luxury. I would now like to welcome Dillis Williams again, so a professor of fashion design for sustainability, to the stage to share a perspective on the importance of these awards. Thank you, Dillis. Thank you, Beatrice. Um, and it's my great honor and pleasure to be here this evening as part of the Kering Awards for Sustainable Fashion 2017, as Beatrice said. This is a revisioning of fashion in ways that we can all uh, really feel proud of, the, of its industry, all of its parts, its processes, and its pieces. Um, but before we actually talk about the winners themselves, which we'll do in a few minutes, I would like to spend uh, calling on what Marco was talking about, about the creation of relationships and how this sort of alchemy cr uh, was created and the ideas emerged from the connections between the people involved. And we all know about the challenges and opportunities before us, being able to decide how we can live well within planetary boundaries, how we can ensure social equality, really means that we need to understand a sense of our interdependence with each other. 
It also means that we need to be able to ask difficult questions, ask questions about our hopes and our intentions, as well as about the contents of our work. And that's really not very difficult, not very easy conversation sometimes. It can be very personal as well as professional. But what we've tried to do here is to create the space where it feels safe to be able to bring these kinds of, of conversations together. And we've certainly got the people who can feel confident and honest in their approach to asking and answering these questions. So members of the program have included industry experts from Kering, from Stella and from Gucci, researchers at Centre for Sustainable Fashion and students from across London College of Fashion. And they have undertaken a reconceptualization of fashion and be able to find ways to be able to apply this to create fashion that is both feasible, viable and desirable for the brands involved. So being able to do that um, really means that um, they are undertaking the most important work. And it's never been a more important time for those working in and studying fashion to have a really deep understanding of its context so they can create informed imagining of what fashion might become. And we have found that we're seeing a new kind of graduate emerging, graduates with capabilities that really can change the course of the fashion industry. And this has become possible because we are connecting ideas from research, expertise from industry, and student experimentation in a way where actually we're all learning from each other. And as you've heard from Beatrice, the results are really quite different from usual fashion practice. They extend the role of the designer, they grow ideas that come from very different disciplines, um, and they give back to nature and to community whilst creating really beautiful work and creating change in the world. So this is a kind of foreground of what we've been doing. Before we announce the winners, we'd like to just share with you some of the insights from the people involved themselves. This collaboration is about bringing together intention-driven creatives. For Caring, partnering with the London College of Fashion is about sharing our expertise in innovation and sustainability. In exchange, receiving the students' creativity and vision for the future is extremely enriching for our group. Having students come in and kind of challenge us and present new ideas has been really, really valuable. Having new recruits into our brand that are sustainably literate is really is critical for us. I strongly believe that the new generations are really sensitive to this kind of subject. It's part of the DNA of the company. We need to push innovation in a sustainable way. The fashion industry is a wonderful industry, but unfortunately it's very harmful to the environment, so it's important to find sustainable solutions. So my project is about pushing the current sustainability boundaries. Sustainability should be something embedded, should be something that's just within us, and together we can push this further. There's a lot of issues that are almost swept under the rug that need to be confronted, and I feel like I'm trying to do that with this project. This project will make me be a lot more considerate when I do business in the future. Working with Gucci was great. We were able to understand their customers and also a full range of their products. Working with Zala has been amazing. It's such a privilege to work with somebody that cares so much about environmental issues the way I do. LCS in particular is a very nourishing school. It's a very kind of like, like a greenhouse for ideas and, and talent and especially sustainability. Luxury has a unique positioning to influence and set the trends of the fashion world. Therefore, Caring feels we have a specific responsibility to transform the fashion industry into a more sustainable one. This is super exciting for us because we are both creating radical ways to re-conceptualize fashion business, its aesthetic, and also its education. Um, I'd now like to invite Carolina Braska to the stage, please. Please welcome me and join Carolina Braska. She's Chief Product Officer at the Selling Department. Sorry, so we're now about to uh, announce the winners themselves for the Stella McCartney uh, Awards, Caring Awards for Sustainable Fashion 2017. 
First of all, I'm going to announce the shortlisted uh, participants. So the shortlist for the awards are Christina Haxam, Dianjin Lin, <laughs> Heather Portbury, Jenny Kowalski, and Mitchell Thomas. And the Kering Award for Innovation in Sustainability and Fashion for Stella McCartney and the prize of 10,000 euros goes to Dianjin Lin. for collaboration in fashion and sustainability for Stella McCartney with internship at Stella McCartney goes to Jenny Kowalski. Thank you very much, Carolina, uh, for being here, and congratulations to the two winners. Now to the Kering Award for Sustainable Fashion for Gucci. Please join me in welcoming back to the stage Marco Bazzari. The finalists. The finalists for the Kering Award for Sustainable Fashion for Gucci 2017 are Bella Gonzhorovic, Charlie Wilkinson, <laughs> Jovi Hon, Law Fernandez, and Victoria Andre. And the Kering Award for Innovation in Fashion and Sustainability for Gucci, with a prize of 10,000 euros and an internship with Gucci, goes to Law Fernandez. And for our final winner of the evening, the Kering Award for Collaboration in Fashion and Sustainability for Gucci, and the prize and internship with Gucci goes to Charlie Wilkinson. I'd like to congratulate all of the students who have taken part in the Caring Awards for Sustainable Fashion for 2017. You've each demonstrated that as we enter an era like none other, we also have graduates like no others. Creatives who can combine integrity and understanding, and with whom we can become justly proud of every facet of fashion. And judging by this year's submissions, the coming year and next stage of the awards is going to be incredibly exciting for us as well. I'm going to hand over to Beatrice now. <laughs> so next year. Some good information. <laughs> uh, yes, I have some more news for you because it's my pleasure tonight to announce 
that for the academic year 2017-18, the brand partners for the carrying awards will be Pomelato and Alexander McQueen. So it's an exciting new chapter for students um, that is coming. Uh, students will have the opportunity to work with experts from Alexander McQueen, a house renowned for its boundless creativity and conceptual design. The house is led by um, Sarah Burton, who produces critically acclaimed collections that juxtapose fragility and strength, tradition and modernity, and darkness and light. The second brand partner, will be with the jewelry brand Pomelato, and this is a first for our partnership with the London College of Fashion, offering students the chance to get insider experience of a fine Italian uh, jewelry, colorful, sorry, I've, I've lost a page, sorry, of a fine Italian jewelry house. Pomelato pioneers the spirit of prêt à porter in the traditional world of fine jewelry and has achieved iconic status with its blend of colorful stones and cutting edge gem settings. So we look forward to next year crop of projects and wish all the students, the future students, the very best of luck. Over to you, Jelis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. So that was, yes, hot off the press. Um, an incredible opportunity for all of our students. The Caring Awards, for anybody who doesn't already know, is open to all students across all three schools, design, business and media, of our final year undergraduate students, and to all of our MA students across all schools as well. So it means that we have the opportunity ourselves to work with great teams, but also we have an opportunity to be able to look at the two debt brands from all those different dimensions. So I would just also like to be able to thank our partners at Caring, at Stella and at Gucci, um, for what we've done over the past year. It's been incredibly inspiring for us and been wonderful company um, throughout the, the awards process to date. Um, and I have to say, yeah, without your leadership, without your, your boldness and your trust in us as well, um, and your unrivaled expertise and commitment, these award-winning uh, projects would not have been possible. Um, I'd also like to thank Francis Corner, the head of London College of Fashion, um, for being the only university leader in the world who has championed a research centre that set out well, nearly 10 years ago now um, with the idea that we would give fashion the biggest critique it would e have ever had. Um, so thank you for uh, trusting us. <laughs> um, for us to be able to view fashion through the lens of design for sustainability and really take it in another direction. You've given us the space to do this through research, through working across all the courses at London College of Fashion, um, and through an exchange of knowledge with businesses large and small. But, as Marco said, there is still a lot more for all of us to do. Um, but I hope that through these kinds of intentions, we are well placed to be undertaking this vital work of change. And just to leave you with a quote from Gregory Bateson, um, who said, the world comes to be as it is imagined. So I do really hope that actually we have this possibility now to be able to make that happen. So thank you, everybody, and good evening. Thank you.